Did you know that we have channel memberships now? If you'd like to help support this channel, get some exclusive Koabana emotes to use in the comments, as well as an exclusive badge by your name, click that join button now to find out more. Every bit of support really helps. Thanks guys. Picture it. You're an elementary school student and you've forgotten something in the classroom. School has ended and most people have already gone home. The building is cold and quiet, but your classroom isn't that far away, so it's no big deal. But then you hear it. A strange sound in the distance that seems to be getting closer. Shaka shaka. Shaka shaka. Confused and just a tiny bit afraid, you stand frozen on the spot as the sound gets louder and louder. And then, finally, you see it. Appearing at the top of some nearby stairs, you see a girl with her arms crossed. At least, it looks like a girl, but she seems to be missing one crucial thing. Her entire lower body. That sound was her nails scraping across the floor as she moved, and as soon as she spots you, she lunges. You run, not knowing or caring which direction, but as you turn to look behind you, fearing the worst, she again leaps and latches onto your head. With ferocious strength, she bites down, and that's the last thing you feel before the world goes black. This story sounds somewhat familiar, doesn't it? Japan seems to have no shortage of monsters that are missing their lower half. And just like Teke Teke, this one is also a girl with no legs. But unlike Teke Teke, Shaka Shaka is believed to be a young girl, probably elementary school aged, and she doesn't necessarily move around on her elbows, but rather uses her nails to claw into the ground and then drags her body behind her to move, all while her arms are crossed. Her name, like Teke Teke, comes from the sound she makes when she moves, with shaka shaka describing a rustling or rattling sound. This particular legend is often said to appear in school hallways, particularly at the top of stairs, and she has incredible jumping speed and strength for someone with no lower body. She always has her arms crossed, and in this manner, she digs her nails into the ground and pulls herself along, which seems a little inefficient to me, but that's her thing, so no arguments here. She's so well practiced at this movement with her arms crossed that she can easily catch up to the students she marks as her prey. But if you happen to spot her, there's one thing to keep in mind. Don't turn around. As long as you don't turn around, you should potentially be able to outrun her, but if you do, she'll lunge and latch onto your head, making it a tasty meal as she bites down on it. Nom nom. It's believed she's quite fond of eating humans, another thing that differentiates her from Teke Teke. But she's also not opposed to tearing off your lower limbs so that you look just like her, before eating them. Kind of rough for a creature said to appear in elementary schools, but I suppose she has to make herself stand out somehow. One popular version of her story tells of a boy who returned to school to pick up an item he left behind. On his way out, he realised that the gym door was open which was rather odd, as it should have been locked by now. The entire school was quiet, except for one sound. Something that almost sounded like footsteps, but not quite exactly. The sound was hard to place, but it seemed to be coming from all over the school. Confused, the boy stuck his head in through the open gym door anyway. Why was it open this late? Did the students in there for club activities forget to close it when they went home? Noticing a jumping box in front of the stage that hadn't been put away, this all seemed rather careless of them. It was about six levels high, and something appeared to be on top of it. Looking closer, 
it seemed to be a person with their arms crossed and head poking out just above them. Was someone still here practicing after everyone had gone home? But the lights were off. He could only just barely see the figure on top of the box under the emergency lights. No, that would be far too strange. So what was really going on? Fear gripped the boy, and as he tried to retreat, his shoulder banged against the door. The figure on top of the jumping box immediately turned to look in his direction. Their eyes met. Even in the dark, he could see the figure smile, and then they lunged towards him with incredible speed. The boy realised the figure had no lower body, and it made a shaka-shaka sound with its elbows as it rushed towards him. It then opened its mouth wide and the boy took off, terrified. But the boy didn't return home that night, and the following day, they found the item he had gone back for by the school's entrance, but the boy himself had seemingly disappeared, and he was never seen again. Another similar version sees yet another student returning to the classroom for something they've forgotten. Seeing a pattern here. At any rate, when he arrives at the classroom, he notices someone outside on the veranda. It's a girl with long hair, and she appears to be squatting. The rest of the students have gone home by this time, so he's a little confused. Why is she squatting on the classroom veranda? Aren't you going home? The boy calls out to the mystery girl. But when he approaches and finally gets a good look at her, he's shocked. She's not squatting. The girl just has no lower body. While he's frozen in fear, the girl turns to look at him and grins. He hears a shaka shaka sound, moments before the girl with no lower body mounts the window and lunges at him. The boy is never seen again. Due to their similarities, Shaka Shaka and Teke Teke are often lumped together, but they are distinct individuals. As I mentioned earlier, Shaka Shaka generally moves around with her arms crossed, digging her nails into the ground and using them to move, rather than running purely on her hands or elbows. She's also most commonly seen looking like a young girl especially in elementary schools, and when she attacks, it seems to be with the intention of eating her victim. She doesn't mess around. And while there are versions of Teke Teke's story where she hangs around on classroom verandas, Shaka Shaka is generally spotted in the gym, particularly on top of a jumping box that hasn't been put away, or at the top of stairs. She then uses that height to launch at her victims before opening her mouth incredibly wide to chomp on their head. But unlike Teke Teke, who generally came about thanks to a train accident, nobody knows how Shaka Shaka was made. No explanation is ever given as to why she doesn't have a lower body. But if you are unfortunate enough to run into her, remember, you mustn't turn around. Just keep running while looking straight ahead, and that's your only possible chance of escape. But considering how few people escape her grasp, that's also not guaranteed. You may find yourself becoming a tasty monster snack when going back for that forgotten item, so be careful. But confusingly, there are some who argue that Shaka Shaka actually came before Teke Teke. In name, anyway. It's said that this name was originally used in Asahikawa, Hokkaido, sometime in the 1970s and possibly even earlier than that, although her story remains much the same. She was hit by a train and the cold froze her body, keeping her alive for quite some time before she died. When she did eventually pass away, she returned as a vengeful spirit looking for her legs. But interestingly, this version notes that She chases after people with a gleeful smile on her face, and she looks quite young, almost like a child. 
Did this at some point split and become an entirely different legend in another part of the country? Or did the name and youthful nature of her looks simply inspire a brand new story to scare children at school? With how little concrete information there is on Shaka Shaka, we may never know. But what did you guys think of this one? Did your school have any interesting urban legends? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.